my fault. Can't you? Come on, no, no time for gossip. Carlton, that load's upside down. Nothing could have gone wrong, this happened. You better be right, because if you're not, we will be renewing our contract with you. Well, well I, I, I can certainly check, Mr. Harris, but I think you'll find... You check, Mr. Johnston. You'd better do the finding, right? Uh, well, right. what I... Organization. Oh, well. So, I thought I ought to warn you that you're heading for a disaster. Oh, You're about to lose one of your biggest contracts with Playtime Electronics. Yes, because some idiot has cocked up my entire system. You want to know who to blame? Oh, I should say so. You want me to spell it out? Yes, yes. You see? Dawson. And it's your fault. My fault! Have you seen my star? With good leadership, this would never have happened. Leadership? Look, I am a manager and a good one. Yes, you are. And you could become a skillful leader, too. But if you think you have nothing to learn about leadership, press exit. I will. Anyway, you can't learn leadership. You're either a, a born, born leader or, or you're not. Yes, funny how a lot of people think that. But leadership is simply a combination of organizing, which you're good at, and motivating, which you're not. Oh, I am? I put a bomb under that lot at least once a day. No, motivating people is freeing them to do willingly and well the job that has to be done. And that's a technique which anyone can learn. Motivation is a simple matter of giving people confidence. Three kinds of confidence. What do you mean? Press C for confidence. Confidence in the value of their job, confidence in their value as individuals, and confidence in their value as a team. <laughs> well, you've lost me now. I mean, how do you go about giving people when you say confidence in the value of their job? Ah, press one. Context, example, important. Very good, clear as mud. Now, if you don't mind, there's an awful lot I could be Let's look at the way you'll probably do it. First, context. No, 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 not there, Carlton. There, in front of the others. You just hate me. Now, Carlton, for instance, hasn't a clue why one box should go in front of the others. As long as he does what he's told. Oh. A leader doesn't just tell people what to do. He carries them along with him. Why don't you try telling him precisely what he's doing? Uh, no, uh, Carlton, Carlton, uh, that's a consignment of thermostats going to spot its construction. Special delivery. Why? Never you mind why. You can do better than that. Try again. Why? Um... Uh, well, apparently there's a gang of our heating engineers, um, on the Dartford site waiting to install them. 
Dartford. Those dimmer switches are going to that site. Shouldn't they go on the same run? Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. You see, a spark of interest and initiative, because for the first time he understands the context of his job. No, sorry, she's not in the office at the moment. No, I don't. No, I can't. No. All right? Thank you. Oh, Malcolm, take me away from all this. Example. Oh, yes, well, she sets a fine example. Doesn't care about the job, lazy madam. But where did she get her example from? Well, you know what it's like in this business, Frank. We're just a glorified camel train, really. Thank God it's thriving. If that's the kind of talk she hears from you about your work, Melanie can't be expected to have much enthusiasm for her. But, of course, the opposite also applies. No problem, Frank. We can cope with a late collection. No, no it will be our pleasure to sort it out. Good. Here we are. Oh. Said he was thinking of transferring some more of his business in our direction there, Melanie. Oh, nice to be popular. Yeah. I guess to call you back within the hour. Definitely. Bye. Set an example of a positive approach to work. Yes, but look, it's the job that's important. And a good leader lets his or her people know how important their job is. Oh, where do you think you're off to? Haven't you number crunchers got any work to do? Oh, and Roy, that list of last month's late payers. On my desk, three o'clock, right? Now, is that what you'd call a highly motivated accounts manager? It's all right. But do I have to go down on bended knee whenever I want anything done? Perhaps not, if Roy got some appreciative feedback on the importance of his department's work. Well, Roy, just what you'd like to know, head office said your cost analysis of the new air freight contract absolutely spot on. Every set of figures tells the story. Well, not to me they don't. How do you do it? Professional secret. Oh. <laughs> By the way, can I have the list of last month's late pay? Yeah, on your desk. Let's see. Okay. So, whatever their position in your workforce, make a point of reminding them every so often that you recognize the importance of the job they're doing. Well, you're saying, if you want to create an atmosphere in which people feel positively motivated toward their work, the first step is... Press 1. Give them confidence in the value of their job. Help them to understand the context of their job. Set an example of a positive approach to work. Feed back to people the value and importance of their function. Oh, I see. Just tell them they're all doing a splendid job and leave them to it. So much for organisation. No, I didn't say you should lose sight of organisation. We are talking about adding a leader's other skills. Yes, well, this leader has an important missing order to take up. I think I have all the skills I can handle, thank you very much. I very much enjoyed our little chat, but if you'll excuse me. I take it you have something further to say? Press two. The leader's second technique for increasing people's motivation. Give them confidence in their value as individuals through challenge, praise, and concern. That's all we need, individualists. Not the same thing at all. I want to know when it went out. If it went out, and if it didn't, where the devil is it? What's it now? 
having trouble on the old Japanese piano, are we? I can't find these old Southeast border records. I'll take your services over to maintenance, will you? I'll do it, Mr. Jobson. I want to work with Malcolm anyway. No, Melanie, you've got your own job to attend to. The lab will do it. But it's miles. Go. Now. Blame Nora. Tell us Malcolm for me, will you? Southeast Order Records. Oh, you've done it! Did you get out? Challenge. Well, he is a challenge. That hooligan. <laughs> Do you know why someone like young Jack becomes truculent? He happens to be a red-hot computer bar knows how to treat us. So it's no wonder he bored stiff being labelled the office gopher. Well, that means I should offer him a challenge? You should always encourage your people to realise their individual potential. Oh, you've done it! Just a moment, lad. I'm going, I'm going. So, um, what do you know about computers? Enough? Could you find those records we seem to have lost? Easy. Very impressive. Why didn't you tell me you could do this? You didn't ask, did you? So, Jack the Lad turns out to be Jack of all trades. <laughs> well, well, well. That's very good, Mr. J. <laughs> Challenge your people. They will feel stimulated and involved if they feel their special skills are being used. All right, you're so clever. Explain this. I've got a member of staff who is challenged up to the hill. So why is she a pain in the ashtray? Your depot administrator. Mr. Jobson. Erica. I really must protest. What is it now, Erica? It's just you you've been employing. I try to ignore you. Turn the other cheek, but there comes a time when his insolence requires more than a sense of humour. Yes, Erica, I'm sure he doesn't mean any harm, but I am trying to track down a missing order. Either and he it's... goes, or I go. Erica, please, you know I can't just... Oh, very so... well. You're determined to keep him on. I mean, all that you can do without me. Be silly, Erica. I resign. You know what you're asking for, don't you? Praise. Praise? Yes. Appreciation, recognition, congratulations, thanks, if she deserves them. But of course she does. She's indispensable. I know that and she knows that. But does she know that you know? Don't waste her enthusiasm. If she knew she was personally appreciated, she wouldn't feel so compelled to draw attention to herself. Uh, Mr. Jobson, I really hey, must... Hey. Oh, uh, Erica. May I just say, I, I, I was very impressed with the speed you got those papers of wine. Ah, well, that's all very well, Mr. Johnson. No, really. And if there was a, a, a world docket processing record, I think you'd be the holder. Oh. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. In fact, I need your help right now, Eric. I'm going mad here trying to track down a missing order. And, well, if anybody can do it... <laughs> that shouldn't take long. Amazing what a long way a word of praise and appreciation will go. I don't believe this. Where the hell's Moody? Moody? Moody! Where the hell have you been, Moody? Waste of time asked. And it's 9.30, Moody. Third time this week. Now get your coat on and get stuck in. I'm warning you, Moody, you are rapidly becoming a very serious cause for concern. Concern. Oh, look! I got one right! Wrong! Oh, yes, of course. Showing concern is the third way a leader gives his people confidence that they matter as individuals. George Moody's got a problem you should be getting to the bottom of, and I don't call shouting at him showing concern. Yes, but you've got to have discipline. I mean, you know I caught him napping on the top as well. I mean, what should I have done? Well, you could have asked him to come and see you in here. Then take a bit of time out to see if you can get to the bottom of his timekeeping problem. Treat him like a human being for a change. 
Come on, sir, sit down, uh, George. Well, I think it's time we had a little uh, talk. Because it is the third time this week, so... Oh. What are you going to do about it? Look, George, your personal life is none of my business. And you being late and asleep half the time is my business. So if you've got a problem, maybe there's something we can do to help. The wife they had an accident. Accident? I don't know, that is no reason why it should. She got the foot jammed in the bus door when it moved off. Is she in hospital? No, she's at home now. She doesn't sleep much with the pain, and of course I'm doing the housework and the shopping and so forth. Well, I have no idea, George. No, of course not. And you can't go around asking everyone if the missus has fallen off a bus lately. Well, I'm very sorry to hear this, George. Well, look, if it's all right with you, um, I'll explain the situation to the others and see if someone can cover for you if you need to take a bit of time off. Well, thank you, Mr. Jobson. I appreciate that. Mm. Well, speaking of time off, I suppose I'd better get back to work. If you show concern for your people, they will show concern for their work. And that's the second of the leader's three techniques for increasing people's motivation. Give them confidence in their value as individuals. Challenge and develop their potential. Praise them for work well done. Show concern for them as human beings. Well, you know, this is all most illuminating. Good. But I mustn't keep you from sorting out that business with Playtime Electronics order. Well, the thing is, to give them confidence in the value of their job, and confidence in their value as an individual. That's it. Did you say there was something else as well? Yes, I did. But you're a busy man. Come on, what was it? Press three. Allow me. The third thing you have to do is build them into a team. Help them to feel, think, and work like a team. Yes, but of course they know they're a team. They only have to look around. And what do they see? A lot of different people doing different jobs. Maybe they're all working towards the same goal. I see to that. I keep the team together. Do you? Well, well, I think I... The word you're looking for is no. Oh, come on, you can't put me on that. Can't I? Let's see. Hey, time electronic. Mr. Harris? Um, no, uh, it's all in, in order, nothing to worry about. Uh, um, this is quite itch due to, um, well, <laughs> you know the low quality of staff one has to get by on these days. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye. Fault number one. Running down the team. No wonder they don't always feel you're on their side. Will Miss Erica Langton kindly come to the general manager's office at once and explain what the hell is taking her so long to sort out a very simple bit of organization? Thank you. Fault number two. Victimization. What about Mr. Harris's order? Only I think. No, no, nothing to do with you, Roy. Get back to work. Fault number three. Leaving somebody out on a limb. Mr. Jobson, the reorganised dispatch schedule. What? Oh. Oh, good. But huh. well, at least someone's using their head around here. Why can't you look like a little bit more like our Melanie, eh? Fault number four, favoritism. It's all right, all right, all right, point taken. As leader, you should treat all the members of your team justly and equally. And it is very important to let them know that they can rely on you as the leader of the team for your support and your protection. Systems failure, Mr. Harris. 
but we're sorting it out. Thank God we've got a good team here. Bye. We've got problems? Yes, Melody. Get everyone together for a meeting in ten minutes, okay? You too, Roy. You're in on this contract. Right. Yes, I see. Help them to feel like a team. Very good. Now you've brought the team together, what's your next move? Oh. Suppose I tell them they're all Is that what you normally do? Oh, no, no, no. I've got a better system than normal. <laughs> uh, normally, I, um, put it in writing. That way I can tell each of them individually exactly what I want. But then they don't know what the others are up to, do they? Well, they don't need to. And if they do... I put up a notice. Does that offer any opportunity for discussion? Do you ever get any comeback? Well, yes. Sometimes. Not a very effective way of communicating, is it? But if you brief everybody collectively, they'll begin to think like a team. They'll begin to think it's worth contributing their ideas. Well, we've got the playtime or the loading. I have got to something in, in the system which allows this sort of mishap to occur. So I've called this meeting to tell you all... Uh, uh, to tell you all that I was, um, uh, uh, wondering uh, if, if, uh, any of you have any ideas. Yes, Mr. Johnson. I've always thought one of the problems is that our priority delivery bay is right up at the top end of the warehouse. Yes, it takes ages to get to it when all the stuff's coming in from the bottom end. Is there any reason why that bay shouldn't be in the middle? That'd save time, because nobody would have so far to go. Open a two-way channel of communication. Yes. Think like a team. And then it's a simple step to helping them work like a team. Well, we already do that. Well, virtually, don't we? Well... Carlton, has the playtime electronic stuff gone off? Just going, why? Could you stop it a moment? Oh, just a favour, mate. This is our tea break. What's going on? Mr. Harris wants to be sure we can get the stuff down to Godson by one. Harris? Does he want blood? George, did you have a look on the board? See what else on the South East Early Run? Not me. It says a transport job. Jack, would you? Why me? Erica's not doing anything. What the hell? Customer services, could you hold the line, please? It's Mr. Harris, what shall I say? But if the system's working, it'll be there by 12.45. He'll never make it. <laughs> he might. Tell him. It'll be there by 12.45. Thank you. Bye. Can I help? Oh. Customer services, could you hold the line, please? Yes? Nobody lifting a finger to help poor Melanie. So much for teamwork. If my timetable doesn't allow for tea breaks, you know. Even so, it's your job as leader to get each member of your team thinking, my job is to help us to do our job, to inspire the idea of helping each other out. I ask you, Godson by one. Just the rush. Search me. Uh, any ideas, um, what the problem is? Erica? Because they've got restricted access hours in Goston. Well, half the one, you can't get a delivery vehicle to their door. <laughs> I mean, can we get it there on time? Depends how many other calls there are on that run. I'll find out. It shouldn't take more than an hour on the motorway. Southbound's closed there. Lorry jackknife. Heard it on the radio. They have to take that minor road through Paxton. You won't get far with a large truck. Was that low bridge at Paxton? A van will get under it all right. Good thinking. But can we transfer onto a van and get the stuff straight there? If he hasn't gone. No, he's still there. Let's go down to the one. Tell him we'll go there about 12.45. Definitely. Tell them we'll be there at 12.45. I like the we. Oh, thank you. When you work like a team, with everybody chipping in, between you, you get it right. And there you are. The third element in the leader's technique for motivating his workforce. Give them confidence in their value as a team. Help them feel like a team. Think like a team. Work like a team. And that's it.
I promised you a simple set of techniques. Motivation in a nutshell. And motivation balanced with organization equals leadership, and that equals efficiency, both in your daily routine and in dealing with a crisis. And speaking of a crisis... I know. Playtime electronics. Melanie, get everyone over to customer services straight away, will you? That's everybody. I need the whole team. Thanks. Well, I have to go. How are you going to handle your people in the future? In confidence in the value of their jobs. By making the context of their job clear to them, setting a good example, and ensuring they know the importance of their job. Give them confidence in their value as individuals by giving them a challenge and giving them praise so that they know their efforts are appreciated and showing concern for them as people. Give them confidence in their value as a team by helping them to feel like a team, think like a team, and work like a team. Now, can I go? Yes. I'm sorry, I had to do it. If leadership were just a matter of organization, I could run this place myself. But you see, I lack something you've got. What's that? Humanity. The human element. And that's the other half of leadership. You need both. Are you all here? Ah, uh, good. Sorry I've been a little delayed, but I'm afraid the computer's been playing up again. Still, with a team like this, who needs computers? Ah. Anyway, uh, good news. The playtime order finally uh, got through, and Mr. Harris has just rung to express his thanks. So, well done all. However, uh, Roy has just reminded me that our uh, contract with playtime is shortly to come up for a new so I'm sure you'll agree it wouldn't be a bad thing if we could offer an even better service for this very valuable client. So, 